Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and today I'm going to be sharing with you some interior design rules that I think are worth breaking. There are so many interior design rules out there and they're really just in place so that you can follow them and get results. Interior design and home decorating does have a little bit of a formula behind it, but it's also an art so you're free to do whatever you'd like. There are some rules out there that I think people try and follow too closely and that's where mistakes happen. So these are the rules that I think you should stop following so you can get the best results. If you enjoy watching and find this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button. And I want to give a huge thank you to Walmart for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, the first rule I think you should stop following is don't mix too many patterns. I think a lot of people get scared away from using patterns because of this rule. I think you can use as many patterns as you like if you just do it in a tasteful way. I think something easy that you can follow when it comes to patterns is just keep within a similar color palette. Usually color palette really harmonizes your space even if you have 10 different patterns. I just picked up some new bold pattern bedding and some new pattern throw pillows all from Walmart. Walmart is one of my best kept secrets to find stylish, on trend, affordable home decor. I wanted to refresh my bedroom a little bit by adding some bold pattern. And the best way to do that is actually by adding a second comforter. So I shopped this classic plaid flannel gap home comforter set from Walmart. And I love that it comes with two pillow shams. You can mix in pattern to your your existing bedding and kind of break it up with some solid pieces as well. I love that this is adding a bold pattern, but it's very neutral in its color and it matches my existing color scheme. So this is the best way to kind of experiment and mix around pattern in your space. If you don't want pattern right next to each other, just add that solid piece in to break it up. I love this comforter set. It's so cozy and it really adds that weight that you need for the cooler months. It's also double sided, so you can actually flip it over and break up the pattern that way. I also shopped these really cute throw pillows from Walmart. I like that they all have a different pattern to them, geometrics, florals, but you can combine them and mix them because they all follow the similar color palette. So it makes it really easy to decorate. Walmart has some of my favorite home brands that are exclusively sold at Walmart, like Gap Home, Better Homes and Gardens, and Drew Barrymore's Beautiful Line. These throw pillows are such great quality. I didn't realize that they were gonna have that hidden zipper so you could remove the cover. So that just made these so much better. I love having that availability so you can wash the covers if needed. You can click the link down below in the description box to shop these throw pillows and my new comforter set. If you wanna add that pop of pattern to your home, this is the easiest and best way to do it. Now I'm sure we've all heard this one. Don't paint a small room a dark color. I actually completely disagree. I think you should paint your smallest room, like your bathroom or an office or a little sitting room, the darkest color. I think it's dramatic, it's bold, and it's so memorable. There's so many ways to make your room feel larger, even if it's painted a dark color. Mirrors are a great way of doing that. You can always put a mirror on an opposite wall of a window or really play with light. Lamps and sconces will really be that light that you need to make the room feel a little bit larger even though it's painted a dark color. You can also play around with contrast. If you're painting a room a dark color, go with lighter furniture, lighter details, things that are really gonna pop, then you get that really amazing depth of feel and your room's actually gonna feel larger. When your walls are painted a darker color and the thing in front is lighter, you're getting that really amazing depth. You can even play around with the gloss of your paint because if you go with a higher gloss paint, you're gonna be able to reflect light a little bit more and it ends up giving you a little bit more of a dramatic effect. Sometimes going with a dark matte paint leaves you with a little bit more of a dry chalky finish and it might not give you that drama that you're looking for. So I actually think it's a rule you should absolutely not follow. If you have a small room, paint it that bold, dramatic color. It doesn't have to be black, but paint it a color that is a little bit deeper, a little bit richer, and you're gonna get that wow factor that you may be looking for. Another paint rule that you can stop following is your doors, your trims, and your ceilings should be painted white. Now that's a safe thing to do and it definitely works most of the time, but don't feel limited by that rule. Your trim does not have to be white and your ceilings don't have to be white and neither do your doors. It's actually an amazing design choice going in the opposite direction. You can paint your trim, your doors, your ceiling, a contrasting color, and you're gonna get a super dramatic designer effect. Painting your ceiling a color is such an amazing way of bringing some color and life into 
into that space in a very unexpected way. And if you have a house that has a ton of trim work, sometimes highlighting that trim work with a paint color is going to make your house just pop. So don't feel limited when it comes to your trim, your doors and your ceiling. You can go all out with paint if you want and it's gonna make such a dramatic difference. This is especially impactful when you have a dark painted room. If you go ahead and paint the trim as well and the ceiling and the doors the same color, wow, you're gonna get amazing results and it's gonna actually make that dark smaller room feel so much bigger. It's gonna extend the length of your walls. It's gonna bring that color into the ceiling and it just gives you this really full dramatic effect that I think is absolutely stunning. So rules should not limit you. If you want everything white, you can definitely do that and there's nothing wrong with it, but don't feel like it's something that you have to do. Play around with color wherever you'd like and trust me, it's gonna give you that designer touch. When it comes to choosing furniture, every furniture piece usually has an intended purpose, but don't let that limit you. you don't have to use every furniture piece for its intended purpose. For example, a dresser. Dressers are usually found in bedrooms to hold your clothes, but they don't have to just be used for that. You can bring them into your front entryway, use them as storage, style them like an entryway table, and you'll add a little bit more of a unique look to your home. Using furniture in a new way is actually a really amazing way of designing a space and adding a unique touch. This will also expand your options as well. If you're shopping around for furniture and you feel limited by your choices, think outside the box and use something for its unintended purpose. You can use a bar cart as a nightstand, a side table, a little organizational piece. You can use your typical console table as a desk. You can use little stools as side tables, drink tables, and you can even use benches that are usually used for seating as a coffee table in a narrow space. In my bedroom, instead of shopping for a dresser, I shopped a sideboard. That gave me a little bit more of a unique touch, it gave a designer look, and it's something unexpected. And sometimes that's just what you need in your space. So don't feel like you need to follow the labels of furniture. Just because its intended purpose is for something doesn't mean you need to use it that way. Another little furniture rule specifically for your dining room that you don't need to follow is having matching dining chairs. This is a very traditional thing to do and it's always gonna look incredible. You can't really go wrong doing it, but it's not something that you have to do. Don't feel like you have to have matching dining chairs. If you don't wanna have matching dining chairs, but you're a little bit nervous about the change, definitely consider just doing two different head of the table chairs. That's always a good place to start because it's gonna really set your space off. It's gonna frame out your table and it's gonna add a little bit of variety. You can also do three different seating types by having two head of the table chairs that match, matching side chairs, and then on the other side of the table, you have a bench. Or or you can go all out and have every chair be different around your table. There's so many ways of doing it, but you don't have to be limited by your dining chairs. Play around with different sizes or you can keep everything the same size. I think having two head of the table chairs with higher backs adds a little bit of drama. Or if you're doing all different style dining chairs around your table for a mixed match look, try and keep them around the same height so you get some cohesive look to your space even though every single thing is different. Let me know down below in the comments if you have matching dining chairs or if you have a little bit more of that curated look. Now there are quite a few rules when it comes to wall art that you should be following, like how high to hang your wall art, how large your art pieces should be, all the little placement details. But a wall art rule that I think is worth breaking is wall art should be hung on your wall. I actually think wall art that's leaned against your wall instead of full out hung looks incredible. It's a little bit more relaxed. You can kind of layer pieces together and I think it gives off this really artistic look. Usually the first thing that comes to mind if you see art leaned up against the wall is that you're planning on hanging it and you haven't done it yet, but sometimes it can be intentional and really well done. And you don't always need to hang art pieces on your walls. There are some amazing spaces where artwork is hung on bookcases and built-ins and it looks incredible. It adds this dimensional look to your space and it's just such a great way of using built-in space to make them look even more artistic. Now, something we've all heard before is every room needs a pop of color and 
That's just not true. Every room does not need a pop of color. If you love neutrals, if you love a monochromatic palette, you can actually play around with contrast and texture the exact same way. Add that pop of texture, add that pop of contrast, and that's gonna give the same effect that a pop of color would give. Sometimes adding in a pop of color just looks a little bit forceful in a way, and if it's not done properly, it's just gonna look a little bit odd and harsh. So I think sometimes taking away the pop of color is actually what's gonna bring your space to life and make it look cohesive, more expensive, and definitely more designer. Now, wood tones is something that I think a lot of people get stuck on. Following the rules of matching your wood tones is a little bit limiting sometimes. I think being able to have a variety of wood tones actually will give you more of a designer look. You can mix wood tones as long as you're doing it in a balanced way. I think it's easier to do this if you're mixing dark woods with light woods. I think that's always successful because you get that contrasting look and they're clearly different. Sometimes when wood tones become a little bit too similar, it looks like you were trying to match but it didn't quite work. Sometimes having the complete opposite actually really works for you and gives you that designer look. So you can have cool tone pieces with warm tone pieces because they are so drastically different. So don't think that you need to limit your choices to all light wood furniture or all dark wood. I think you will expand your options and expand your design if you actually choose both. And lastly, the same thing goes for metals around your home, any kind of hardware or metal. You don't need to hone in on one metal type for your entire home. You can mix nickel, brass, black, stainless steel, you can have it all around your home as long as there's balance. And I actually recommend it. If you just choose one metal tone for your entire space, it just becomes a little bit flat, a little bit safe, and you're not getting that depth that you would get if you decide to choose different metal tones. I think black hardware, black metal is always really easy to integrate into other metals. So if you don't want to do all gold or all silver, integrate black in there and it's gonna help break it up a bit. As long as things are very obviously different, it will look intentional. So for example, choosing antique brass, which doesn't give off so much of a shine with a high shine nickel and a matte black, those have all different finishes to them so they won't be competing against each other and they're gonna really stand out in their own way. So it doesn't have to be super thought out where it's gonna stress you out, just make sure that you bring those metal finishes into every room of your home. So if you're mixing metals in your kitchen, mix them in your bathrooms and mix them in your living room. Bringing in metals with lamps and decorative pieces and side tables is really gonna help integrate all of those different types of metals all around your home. All right, so that's it for my interior design rules that I think are worth breaking. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree with any of these and if these are things that you would do in your home. And again, I wanna give a huge thank you to Walmart for sponsoring today's video. If you enjoyed watching and found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button and make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. Click that red subscribe button down below and make sure you guys have your notifications turned all the way on so you're first to see the next video. Love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.